economic fundamentals. She also said this decision wouldn't come as a surprise to anyone since the president has been talking about it for decades. Joining me right now, RNC spokeswoman Kaylee McNamee and Democratic strategist Michael Starr Hopkins. Good to see you both. Hey, thanks. Michael, you have a problem with these? Yeah, I mean, I think this is a terrible idea. If you look at the effects it's going to have on middle American workers, I mean, look, when we talk about aluminum and steel, we're talking about cars, we're talking about construction, not just construction buildings, but the actual vehicles that we use to lift these materials. You know, the president for a long time has been tweeting out and trying to do policy from Twitter, but this is international policy, and this is going to affect everyone. This is just a terrible idea. And I got to say, for once, the Chinese is actually, they're right. Okay, uh, they're right. <clears throat> and and this is ha- have, you, have you noticed, Kaylee, how like suddenly Democrats are 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 uh, sounding like fiscal conservatives and free traders? Uh, because yeah, you they, know I, they, it didn't used to be entirely that way, but because well, uh, it's calling it down the middle. What, it's, what's it's, your take no, on this? I, it almost seems that it's just. I think he's stolen some of your thunder. To be honest, Michael. I mean, he can keep that thunder. He he. <laughs> and, and 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 if you're a blue collar Democrat in Pennsylvania, you hear this right. news and you're psyched. Uh, and, and that's bad news for you guys come 2018. But uh, your take on it, Kaylee. Yeah, that's right. You know, it's ironic to hear and quite crazy to hear the Democrats against unions now. You know, the AFL-CIO has come out, uh, the head of that union, and said, this is great. We applaud Mr. Trump. They, of course, uh, represent 12.4 million union workers. Mm -hmm. They think it's great. Uh, Likewise, I just want to point out, and this, by the way, we talk about the effect on consumers, one cent on your beer, one extra penny. And that cost is nothing when you consider what we're getting in return. Right now, aluminum smelters, let's consider in 1993, we had 23 smelters. Now we have just five. Of those, one of them produces the steel that, or the aluminum that we need for fighter jets. The only two other countries that produce that are United Arab Emirates and China. So, Michael, do you want to be dependent in a time of war on China and UAE? Maybe you do, but I think that's crazy. Well, I mean, we've actually been in multiple fronts of war uh, in the last 20 years, and we've actually watched the uh, aluminum and steel jobs rise. In 2013 to 2016, we saw a rise. The U.S. Department Department of Defense buys 3% of the aluminum and 20, or rather uh, 3% of the steel and 20% of the aluminum. So it's not an issue of national security. This is an issue of hindering. I mean, she's making a good point here, and this is what we heard from John Lapidus as well. It could be an issue of national security. I mean, a lot of things could be an issue. A lot of things could be an issue of national security. But if you want to talk about national security, we should be looking to China as an ally right now rather than pissing them off and pushing them against North Korea. Keep it clean. Keep it clean. We've got kids around here. Oh, come on. (laughs) We do. Anyway, Michael, uh, you know, look, the Chinese, um, in terms of being friends with them, we've tried that, right? We've tried, we've tried being friends with everyone, and it, it hasn't worked. So, Kaylee, is it time to try something new? And, by the way, put your money where your mouth is. If you tell the Chinese, hey, sign on to these sanctions, and let's be clear, let's be on the same page when it comes to North Korea, and then they go and trade with North Korea behind your back, don't you have the right to invoke some kind of economic pain on them? Absolutely. I mean, look at this. The Chinese have made a fool out of us under the Obama administration, slapping a 35 percent tariff on our cars that we are exporting. We have a 3.5 percent tariff on them. It's inequitable. They are running circles around us. We have a president that was elected to change that. And if we talk about China, they are dependent on us. One fifth of their exports come into the United States. They need us. And this is just leveling the playing field. It's a smart way to go about it. And President Trump was elected to do just this. All right, Kaylee, Michael, sorry, I got to leave it there. Listen, I think at least when it comes to North Korea, these guys are threatening to send a missile at us. We have economic power. It is time to use it. It is that serious. I agree with that. So you might as well be losing dollars and not lives. And if that's what it takes, you know, an extra penny on a beer, it's a price I'm willing to pay. That's for sure. Anyway, guys, thank you so much. We're going to follow these markets more next.